Hello, everybody. It is Brandon again, and just wanting to go over uh, some additional software for some new training material we just got. Uh, this is going to cover the uh, Connected Components Workbench. This is the free software for the Micro 800 series uh, for the Allen Bradley PLCs. So uh, getting started with this, the very first thing we need to do is determine what the IP address range is for the Micro 820 controllers or trainers that we have. The Micro 820 controllers using the IP Explorer tool that I have, the Allen Bradley IP Explorer tool, I was able to connect and uh, find that the IP range that these controllers use uh, fluctuates in the 169.254 range. And then the last two octets of the IP address change pretty much every time it's restarted. <clears throat> so what I've done is since I was able to get that information, I restarted it three times and was given everything in the 169.254 range. So how you start out with this is first thing we need to do is we're using our secondary NIC card in our computer. <clears throat> and I'm gonna set a static IP to that and then connect directly to the micro 820 controller uh, that way I can uh, get those octets and the subnet mask set up so I can actually communicate with it directly. So how you're going to do this is you're going to have to go into the control panel. So as you can see, it's on my frequently used. And I like category better. I'm going to click network and internet, click network sharing center, click change adapter settings. And this is what we're connecting directly to is our second NIC card in our computer with the Cat5e cable. So I'm just going to double click on that and it's going to show, you know, what, what, what everything, the connectivity, the duration, the speed and everything. And then I'm going to click properties. When I click properties to set a static IP in that 169.254 range, you're just going to click on IPv4 and click properties. And I've already got it set, but Typically it would be obtained, it would be on this one by default, or you might have a different IP address in here. So all you're gonna do is click here and change that to 169, sorry, 169.254.1.1. And the reason I use .1, I mean, you can use anything technically within that IP range. The, the secret though is using .1 opens you up to kind of the whole range of what these numbers would be between uh, zero and 255, but uh, the, the important part is the subnet mask. So I know that this micro 820 changes the last two octets of the PLC IP address every time I shut it off and restart it, and the first two stay the same. So the subnet mask, I want to make that 255, 255, and what that does is it locks this 169 and 254 in place and that's what the RS links is going to search for. And then the 1.1 are one just generic placeholders. Having the 0.0, .0 here means it can be any number in the range. So having the 255 basically means it's going to lock in the 169.254 and the 0.0, .0 is opening these numbers up to be anything. So it'll identify anything within that range that pops up. So I'm gonna hit okay and then close, close, close close. A lot of windows. So next thing I need to do <clears throat> is I can open up my RS Links Classic. And as you can see, I have several devices and several uh, Ethernet gateways here, but I, I assigned it under the AB Ethernet IP2 Ethernet. And it did pop up with this IP address. It found it automatically. And what that means is Originally, when I found this, it said 169, 254, 201, 124, um, micro 820, and then it had a question mark here instead of the device. All you have to do is right click on it, the device itself, and when you do, you'll see this upload EDS file. So if you have a yellow question mark, just click the upload EDS files from device. And what that'll do is it'll just, you'll basically hit next through it and it'll pull the image file and the EDS file from the controller and load it into RS links. And now you have an identified connected device here with the proper name and the proper image. 
So we can close out of RS links, or actually I'll just minimize it for the time being. And I'm going to open up the uh, the connected components workbench software, which I just opened it. And this is brand new to, uh, this is what your screen will look like. So in order to upload the existing program from the controller, we already saw in the RS links. And RS links is like the bridge between, it's the software bridge between the IP address assigned to the PLC and what you're gonna see on the screen here in a minute. So we can actually pull the program from the PLC itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do the discover. So I'm gonna look for the PLC and then I'm gonna upload the program from the PLC to the computer. And remember that in uh, programmable logic controllers, you are uploading from the PLC to the computer and you are downloading from the computer to the PLC. So it sounds opposite of what you think it would actually be. But if you're uploading, you're actually pulling up the file or the program from the PLC itself so you can view it on the computer. If you build a program on the computer and then you wanna send it to the PLC, you would actually download it to the PLC. But again, we'll get that terminology and everything straightened out once we go through a few more classes. But I remember in the RS Links connection browser, the PLC we were looking for was on the Ethernet IP2 Ethernet. So if I expand that, it should be the only one that doesn't have a red X going through it. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the 169.254.201.124 micro 820, and I verified it is the 20 QBB. I'm directly connected to it. So all I gotta do is click on that and highlight it. And once it's highlighted, I can just hit the okay. And it has no password. So we don't have to worry about that. Some controls engineers, when they design a program, they want to make sure that only the other controls engineers or the maintenance techs who do the troubleshooting have that password. That way, nobody else has the capability to maybe remotely log in if they're on an intranet or it's an unsecured network. So this is kind of an important thing. I don't set passwords in a training environment, but I, I, I always recommend it in a real world environment. I'm just going to hit the OK button. And what this is going to do is it has discovered it. So it says creating project controller. So as you notice, you can see it's loading in here and pretty soon we'll have a, a project program open up. And this is actually a pretty fast software. It's not like the TIA portal or um, Studio 5000 or even Factory Talk where it seemingly takes forever to do anything. Uh, this is actually uh, pretty, pretty fast. I, I, was, I was actually pretty happy about it. But as you can see, um, just a couple of variables to notice, we're in remote run mode and we're not in program mode yet because we're not necessarily changing anything. So now it's starting the upload from the resource. I know it seems like this might be um, going, going a little slow, but as you can see here, upload is successful or upload succeeded. Here's a little bit of information, the data, just like in Studio 5000, you get this message block. A lot of people uh, consider the Connected Components Workbench, SE, since it's free, it's like a cheaper version of Studio 5000 or RS Logics 5000, but it, it's actually pretty resourceful. You can do a lot of things with this. So if I go into programs, project or program one and then local variables, if I just double click on this, it's gonna pull up my uh, variable table here. And as you can see, it doesn't really have anything listed in. So what I'm gonna do here What I'm gonna do here is pull up the global variables, which I just did here, and the program variables should be blank. So your global variables are gonna be the ones that are sort of hardwired to the PLC itself. And I can just toggle between them up here. Program ones are gonna be ones you create, like your timers, your counters, and other things like that specific to the program you're building. And the micro 820 variables are the ones that are built into the PLC and you can't really, I mean, you can delete them, but I don't really recommend doing that. So as you can see, it has the type, you know, you have some dents, some strings, some timers, uh, some Booleans, mostly Booleans, but uh, your Booleans are gonna be kind of like your, your buttons, your on offs and such. Now, as you can see, these check marks here are going to represent what is on right now. So uh, right now I'm looking at the trainer here, output four is on. So input output, 
EM digital output 04. If you look at output four on here, the red light is on. And the way the program is currently built is if you push input four, output four will turn off. So what you're gonna see here on the digital inputs, you can see your red push button is wired in a normally closed configuration. But if I push it, you'll see live, your red push button goes away because again, it's wired in a normally closed situation. And then you also know that DO4 turned, it turned your red light off. Now, if I let go of the push button, you should see the check marks come back. So that's how you know that the input four is wired and normally closed because I haven't pushed it yet, but it's on. And then your output for your red light on the trainer is on when that button is not pressed. But if I press the button, it turns it off. And you'll notice as I push the other inputs here, your toggle switches, you'll see that they are also getting those check marks. And the basic program that's built has the lights turning on with the corresponding inputs. So again, there's just a really basic program in here, but I'm gonna start letting go of these and turning them off and you'll see those check marks disappear. All right, so now that we've gone over the basics of the inputs and outputs, how do we actually utilize our program and view what we have running already? So it's pretty simple, like we've done with everything else where we've just double clicked on it. If you go to program one and double click, it brings up the ladder logic diagram. Um, so as you can see, there's a move function down at the bottom and then you just basically have your input devices turning on your output devices. So running this live, you can see when the light, when the line turns red, instead of highlighting green, like in Studio 5000, that means it is energized. So if I turn toggle switch one back off, you'll go back to blue and you're de-energized. Now remember, since input four is wired normally closed, it is already on. So if I push it, input four, your input four and light four is now de-energized. So again, pretty basic. I can turn them on one at a time or turn them all on. So again, this is just a generic ladder logic diagram that I've made just to demonstrate how you can fire your inputs and outputs. So that being said, this was just a demonstration on how to upload a program from the PLC using the Connected Components Workbench Standard Edition. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks, have a good day.